an extremely interesting line against the Scandinavian I want to show you right now. You know that uh, there are like a couple of weeks uh, till Chasuble publish uh, my uh, course Butcher the Scandinavian. I'm gonna let you know in time so you're gonna be able to find all those refutations against the Scandinavian. And one of the uh, subscribers asked me could I show a little bit of uh, Lenhardt variation here? Well, I'm gonna show you one remarkable uh, game here played by Nakamura against Ferozia. But I also want to tell you one more thing uh, that B4 is an e extremely interesting and gives a very rich and powerful play in, in an active time controls. So bullet, blitz and rapid controls. So let's go. I want to show you something here. Game was played uh, between uh, Nakamura playing white and Ferozia playing black. So it was E4, D5. He takes, queen takes, knight c3, queen a5, and b4. It's an interesting pawn sack where you just want to, for the sake of pawn, get an open b file and get a full activity of your piece. Uh, yesterday I played an interesting blitz game where my opponent tried to reject this. Uh, there is a very interesting approach here, squeezing out the queen with the pawn on b5. I very much like this pawn on b5. It really uh, kind of squeezes out the queen and uh, limits its activity. Uh, also, fighting successfully against both a6 and c6 afterwards. When they play c6, so they can just step back when they want, we go with a4, uh, over supporting the pawn on b5, and at some point giving us a very important move, uh, bishop to a3. At this moment, I'd like to point out one thing that most of these guys uh, play knight f6. An interesting attempt would be e6 uh, in order to, for the time being, prevent bishop a3 or at least slow it down. But from another point of view, the light square bishop on c8 is now uh, very closed and he doesn't have like a good perspective for the rest of the game. So that's why everyone goes with knight f6 and when they do it, you just play bishop a3, you just get a bishop on this diagonal and by the way, for more of analysis and for everything else, go and find my video on the channel Scandinavian Leonhard Gambit with a white piece. So you can just find the video and check it out. In that game played between Nakamura and Ferozia was queen b4. Nakamura played rook to b1 threatening this queen and just like I told you getting an open file with tempo. Queen d6 happened in the game. Here I'd like to emphasize an importance of the queen a5 or rook b5 move because only move is queen a6. You go knight f3, knight f6 and a very lovely uh, rook uh, move because it goes on b3 but not just like that. You go with a rook back on b3. Uh, by the way, bishop is attacking the queen and the point of rook on b3 is when you play d4 getting the space. Whether they play c6, e6, a6, your next move will be bishop a3. So that rook on b3 definitely uh, serves that bishop going on a3 and just speeding up your initiative afterwards in the middle game. Uh, uh, by the way, on your question, after bishop a3, queen d8, uh, what's so special about this position? Well, there, there are lots of special things about this position. Uh, I have like four minor pieces developed, open b file, e file is gonna be mine as well. I have that rook very interestingly placed on rook to b3. You can never play bishop e6 to get rid of it because pawn on b7 is hanging. And at the same time, I'd like to complete my development with castle knight e5 and include my queen into the action on the king side at somehow, at some point. That's what you need to know about these positions. I showed you all about this stuff. So it's time to check the main line. And what Firuzia played. Firuzia went for queen d6. Nakamura played d4. Firuzia played queen d8. Uh, probably Firuzia's thinking process was I grabbed the pawn, all I have to do is to complete my development. Well, that's exactly the point of Nakamura's pawn sacrifice. He also wants to uh, organize like initiative and counter attack for the given pawn. So, what happened there? After uh, he played bishop c4, knight f6, played knight f3. Unfortunately for Ferozia, he cannot develop this bishop for two reasons. First of all, b7 is hanging. A second thing, 
you have famous bishop f7, king f7, knight e5, check, and both bishop on g4 and king on f7 are hanging. After knight f3, they just go with e6. Uh, Ferozia just play this. Uh, okay, his bishop on c8 protects the pawn on b7. That's a good thing. But a bad thing about this is that the light square bishop looks weak. He went for castles, bishop e7. And for example, for all of you who would like to practice your skills how to build up attack or just to come up with a good initiative, take a look at this position, pause the video and try to find the move for white. So you're, you don't have anything winning, but you just have to find a move where you slowly, steadily and gradually improve your attacking prospects. Whoever said 95, congratulations. It's not only uh, removing the knight towards the center, but basically you're just opening the queen to go on f3 and to go into the attack. Firozia went for castles and Nakamura played rook to e1. I like this move. Uh, improves the knight, uh, open e file, takes everything and black just went for c5. Uh, very logical move because he should be happy to break the white center and to somehow uh, do something about these pieces on the queen side. That's why when I played against pretty experienced Scandinavian players, this Leonhard Gambit, they usually go with, because they, they really feel the problem of the light square bishop and the square b7 on the b-file, they go with fast a6, b5, bishop b7. Uh, if after c5, d5 was one of the crucial uh, moments of the game. So, what does Nakamura get after d5? After he played d5, first of all, he fights for the center, puts pressure on the pawn on e6. In some moments, uh, threatens either d takes e6, knight f7, uh, and stuff like that. Even in some moments, some um, d6, if possible, if he removes the queen. So, after e takes, knight takes, bishop e6, Firuzia finally uh, thought that this could be good because he's ready to get a pawn back just to solidify and consolidate himself finally. Although he completely forgot about something else. And once again, this is a task for you. So pause the video and find tactics. White moves and wins. Guys, if you found knight takes f7, congratulations because all of a sudden everything is just hanging in black's game uh, when he captures by king if he captures by bishop uh, then knight takes e7 and the rest should be easy if he captures by rook rook takes e6 with a bishop pair with a fantastic control along the file uh, black is just completely lost firuzia captured by king tried his luck maybe nakamura who's one of the best tactical players ever uh, wouldn't be able to see rook takes e6 of course he did it, he did it on, on spot, so after king e6, captured on f6, queen f3, king e5, queen g3, king d4, bishop e2, and white king, sorry, black king was in mate, so after king c4, queen to b3, checkmate. What a lovely, lovely way to finish the game, and I really enjoyed this uh, game a lot. So if you really want to learn like more of these secrets about the Scandinavian Leonhard Gambit, go on the channel, find the video and find uh, how to play Scandinavian Leonhard Gambit with white pieces. Thanks for watching and see you next time.